What's going on, our squad? Listen, I am so pumped to have you back with us again for 2018. I hope that you've had a crazy good school year kickoff, and this semester is going to be a blast. And if you're brand new, I want to welcome our sixth graders that have moved up into the big world of middle school. Middle school, bleh, middle school, I want to welcome you in here. And we've got some new seniors in the house. We've got new upperclassmen in the house. We have got four houses that are slam packed tonight. And I am so pumped that you decided to be here. If this is your first time here, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to hang out. You're going to chill with me a little bit on this video. We're going to talk about God, talk about how God relates to us and how we relate to other people. So in your R Squad home are some adults that you probably have already met, but if you haven't, make sure you get to know them. Make sure you get to know them because they're going to be hanging out with you each and every week. They're going to be chilling with you as your small group leaders and helping you understand more about God's Word and just building relationships with you. Now, one of those incredible, great, awesome, phenomenal things that we're going to be doing is D-Now, people. D-Now Weekend is here. Now, if you don't know what D-Now Weekend is, D-Now Weekend is one of the coolest things we ever do in our squad and I mean we ever do. You don't want to miss out on D-Now Weekend. Matter of fact, you know what, I'm going to shut up I'm just going to let you guys check out the video. There you have it, D Now Weekend. You don't want to miss it. So, to get signed up, here's all you need to do grab your parent, jump on our website, rsquad.tv, and then go to the events page, and you'll see right there we have everything that you need to get signed up for D Now. Nice little register button at the bottom so that you can get registered and ready to go. Listen, this event fills up super quick, so don't miss out. Jump in there and get signed up for D Now. So let's go ahead and let's get started with our brand new series that we're kicking off this month with called Boss. 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 Oh. As we begin, I want to tell you a little story about a friend of mine. This is my friend, Jared Connect. Jared is an incredible guy, super talented. He is a director and filmmaker. I first met Jared when he was a teenager, just like you, in a group, just like our squad, hanging out together, and he went on to do amazing things. Now, a few uh, months ago, he shot a commercial uh, for a small beginning shoe company, which you may have heard of right here. Yep, yep. Now this shoot was for a brand new line of shoes that Pharrell was putting out, so he had the opportunity to sit down and shoot a commercial with Pharrell himself. Now Adidas had hired Jared to create a commercial that reflected a certain attitude that went along with Pharrell's new line of shoes. But when Pharrell showed up on the scene, uh, there was a little bit of an issue because Pharrell didn't like being told what to do. Jared was hired and paid to be the boss of the shoot, but Pharrell didn't want a boss. So essentially what you have here is you have Jared, my friend that's the director, and then you have the superstar Pharrell, and the two of them are trying to both accomplish something great, but the problem is there's too many bosses in the house. Pharrell is Pharrell. He doesn't have to listen to anyone if he doesn't want to. And so he didn't like some of the dialogue. He kind of gave his shot, shortened his time. And at the end of the whole awkward tension of trying to shoot this commercial, trying to capture the big vision, Jared got it finished. But the question would be, did he really get it finished to make the best commercial spot? Did he really get it finished with the overall vision and best end in mind? Accomplish that goal. Now here's the thing, you and I can relate to this in a lot of ways. One of the ways that we can relate to this is because we don't like being bossed around. See, as a teenager, you're going to push back against authority. It's normal. It's the way that your brain is beginning to change. Like when you were a kid, you didn't really push back a ton on authority. You had to have it. You had to have parents because if you didn't, well, you would die. But now you're a teenager. 
And there's this piece of, of you that is independent. You're feeling this independence and capacity to make decisions like you never have before. Now, independence is a great thing, but here's what we also know, is that if we're really honest, sometimes we are not the best boss of ourselves. I remember there was one time I was about 16 years old, feeling like a boss, I had my own car, doing my own things, and I was working for this uh, golf club. And this golf club was having a huge party, and one of the things that they needed was bamboo. Now it just so happened I had access to it, but the problem was I had to cut it down by hand. So I go out there and I say, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be the boss of this project. I'm going to do my thing. And I go and I get my brother, my kid brother, to come and help me. And he goes out there and he's trying to help me. And he's doing the absolute best he can. But I'm not, we're not getting the job done fast enough. And I start getting angry. And I start getting frustrated. And things aren't going right. Because you know what? I'm the boss of this project. I'm going to make sure that this happens. And in my anger and my frustration, I end up lashing out at my kid brother. Ended up calling him things that I, I'm ashamed of. Ended up saying things to him that were hurtful and painful. When we start operating like we're our own boss, we stop caring about other people as much. When we're our own boss, we can cause a lot of damage. And when we're our own boss, we can miss out on God's best. So when it comes to this idea of boss, I want to talk today about the difference between independence and idolatry. Now, idolatry is not one of those words that we use a whole lot today in our normal speak. But in the Bible, especially in the book of Exodus, we see this thing taking place where God had his chosen people, the nation of Israel, and he had a huge plan of what was best for them. But the problem was they kept getting distracted. They stopped focusing on God's best and started putting and worshiping other things. Those things were idols. Specifically, they had one called Baal. And instead of trusting in God, they would begin trusting in this false God, this idea in this thing called Baal. And this was causing a ton of problems because God's looking down and he goes, listen, I have what is best for you, but you're too busy looking in other places. You are to have no other gods but me. You are to have no other gods. You must not have any gods but me. And it was really, really clear that what came first had to be God. You might be asking yourself, Joey, what does this ancient story of idols and stuff have to do with me? And here's the thing. While today you may not be worshiping the idol of Baal, it's very possible that you're stuck on worshiping the idol of you. So what does it mean to worship the God of me? Well, that's whenever we take a moment to put somebody down through gossip to make ourselves better, to push ourselves to the front of the line, or sometimes it's just to disobey God because we think we know better than he does. Now, if you've ever been in this place, don't worry because Jesus' disciples found themselves in this own place. As a matter of fact, we find this story where James and John, who were called the Son of Thunder, which is a pretty cool nickname if you think about it. The sons of thunder were arguing with Jesus one day and they come up to Jesus and they're like, hey listen, when you go to heaven, who is going to be seated at your right and at your left? And what they were wanting to know was who was going to be the most important next to Jesus when they get to heaven one day. Who was going to be the guy that got to kick their feet up and let everybody else be beneath them? But Jesus knew what was going on here and so he calls them together he says, guys, you're so just out of place. And he says, you know what? The rulers in this world lord it over people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be the first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the son of man came not to be served, but to serve others and give his life as a ransom for many. So according to Jesus, the way that we defeat the God of me is by giving up our seat. See, when you give up your seat, you choose to put others before yourself. When you give up your seat, you choose to serve people rather than be served. So how do you know when you're worshiping the God 
of me. Well, you know it when you act selfishly, when you speak arrogantly, and when you respond defensively. If you keep finding yourself in these moments where you tend to be a little selfish, you're arrogant about who you are and what you're about, and you're responding defensively to people always trying to make yourself look okay, you might have an issue with worshiping the God of you. So here's some ideas to help you kind of navigate this. First, just act selflessly. Go last, put someone else first, serve the people around you. Speak generously, like talk good about people. I mean, what would it look like if everybody at your school decided, hey, I'm just gonna start speaking good about people more than I speak bad about them. And here's the last one, just respond humbly. Be quicker to listen, be slower to speak. Assume in any situation that there's still things that you can learn. See, the God of me isn't the one that you want to serve. And the God of me gets in the way of you understanding God's greatest plan. And when you follow the God of me, you hurt yourself and you hurt others. And ultimately, you miss out on God's best for your life.